many of the time we come to the terminology of 90% ci value what is 90% ci value that is confidence interval in the bioequivalence and why it is 90% we come to know regarding 90% interval or 90% ci that is confidence interval but we don't know why it is 90% and why not the other values so i welcome you to the video where we will find out the answers to these questions so let's start with the video first we will see the introduction to bioequivalence bioequivalence is a comparison between generic drug and the reference drug or between the two drug formulations to ensure similar pharmacokinetic behavior for ensuring the therapeutic equivalence bioequivalence can be done between two different doses form also like tablet versus capsule or tablet versus <coughs> suspension or capsule versus suspension or it may be for the formulation before change and after change so bioequivalence involves pharmacokinetic evaluation for the rate and extent of drug absorption and it ensures the therapeutic equivalence key parameters evaluated in the be study or bioequivalence study are cmax and uc cmax is max concentration of the drug reached and uc is the area under the concentration time curve that is total drug absorption so cmax is for rate of absorption and auc is extent of absorption this is regarding the bioequivalence now coming to the terminology of 90% <coughs> confidence interval or 90% ci so what is 90% ci first understand about the ci what is confidence interval confidence interval is a statistical range that indicates whether where the true ratio of test and reference drug pharmacokinetics is likely to lie simply 90% ci means that there is a 90% probability the true value is within the interval based on the data this is very simple definition to understand about the 90% ci so 90% confidence means there is a 90% probability the true value is within the interval based on the data and it is a bioequivalence criteria so bioequivalence is pass or fail that is determined based on the ci value for bioequivalence to be concluded the ci 90% ci of the test and reference ratio for key pharmacokinetic parameters that is cmax and auc should fall within 80 to 125% range on this channel you will find from where this 80 and 125% range is coming how it is calculated and why it is 80 to 125 so you can watch that video to have a good idea about this 80 to 125% range for 90% ci 90% ci ensures that the test drug performs similarly to the reference drug in terms of the absorption and exposure and how it is related to absorption and exposure because it measures the cmax and the auc cmax measures or denotes or refers to the rate of absorption and auc refers to the extent of absorption then what is the meaning of 90% ci how it is calculated the 90% ci is derived from the statistical analysis of data collected during the bioequivalence study and that is nothing but the plasma concentration it takes into account the variability and the sample size so it is a statistical data base value 
which takes into account the variability and the sample size. Interpretation If the CI of the ratio of C max or AUC lies within 80 to 125, the test drug is considered to be bioequivalent with the reference. And if the CI value is out of this range, then the products are not bioequivalent. Acceptable outcome example I have taken here. If 90% CI of the CMAX ratio is 85 to 115, bioequivalence is accepted. And if the 90% CI for AUC ratio is 75 to 135, that means the bioequivalence is rejected. Understand that 90% CI of the CMAX ratio for highly variable drug has different values as well based on to the intra-subject variability. But here in this video only you consider the 80 to 125 range to understand about the CI. Then why 90% CI is important? Because it considers the statistical precision, it considers clinical relevance and it considers the regulatory standard. Talking about statistical precision, the 90% CI gives the estimate of how precise the observed bioequivalence results are. Clinical relevance, it ensures that differences between the test and reference drugs are clinically insignificant. That means the test and reference product will have similar therapeutic efficacy and safety. Regulatory standard the 80 to 125 percent CI range is widely accepted by regulatory authorities like FDA, EMA, and other regulatory authorities for bioequivalence testing. Now, you might be having the question that why it is not 100 <clears> percent <throat> or why it is not 95 percent or 99 percent, 98 percent, why it is 90 percent only. So, if 100% CI is there, that means 100% CI would imply absolute certainty and it will be too wide to offer meaningful conclusions. It would miss clinically relevant differences between the test and reference drugs. But 90% CI provides the reasonable level of confidence while keeping the results clinically actionable. Statistical trade-offs like type 1 error and type 2 errors. So type 1 error are what? False positive. Type 2 error is what? It is false negative. Type 1 error means false positive. And it means declaring bioequivalence when it is not. That means the bioequivalence is passing but it is false. It is false positive. Type 2 errors means false negative. The bioequivalence is passed but it is failing to declare bioequivalence when it is true. 90% CI strikes the balance between reducing type 1 and type 2 errors. Higher confidence like 95% may increase type 2 errors by accepting too much variability. Lower confidence like 80% CI may increase type 1 errors that means falsely rejecting the bioequivalence so here one thing is to understand that we should not declare the bioequivalence when it is not and we should not declare the bioequivalence is failing when it is actually passing so here the 90 percent ci strikes the balance between these two errors type 1 error and type 2 error so always understand this thing that 90 percent ci strike the balance between the errors the 80 percent to 125 percent acceptance range is there given by the regulatory bodies for y equivalence the 90 percent ci of the test and reference drug ratio must fall within the 80 percent to 125 percent range for key pharmacokinetic parameter that is Cmax and AC and this range ensures that differences between test and reference drugs are 
clinically insignificant. If we consider 100% CI, then what will happen? A 100% CI would provide absolute certainty about the true value, but the CI would be too wide to draw any practical conclusions. Lack of precision. If it is 100% CI, it would include large variations leading to ambiguous or uninformative results. While 95% CI offers statistical rigor while maintaining clinical relevant thresholds. This is one of the reasons. Now, if 95% CI or 99% CI, what it will do? So, it would result in wider acceptance margin allowing too much variability. While 90% CI offers a good compromise between statistical confidence, practical relevance, and clinically relevant conclusions. So, 90% CI is widely accepted standard for bioequivalence testing and other values are not included or other values are not considered or other values are not provide the guarantee for clinical relevance, statistical confidence and the practical conclusions. 90% CI is used in the bioequivalence testing because it provides an optimal balance between confidence, precision and clinical relevance. 100% CI would be too wide and uninformative while 90% CI ensures the test drug is clinically relevant to the reference drug. Regulatory standards use 80 to 125% criteria as a bioequivalence margin which aligns with the 90% CI approach. So this is regarding the information on confidence interval of 90% in bioequivalence and why other values are not considered. So I hope you might have liked this video and you might have got good information for 90% CI. What is 90% CI? Why it is 90% in the bioequivalence? So thank you for watching the video and please do share this video to your colleagues and friends. Also comment for the topics if you want uh, any video on specific topic you can comment and i will try to answer your queries and i will come with the video for your suggested topics thank you